we're looking at an all atom simulation of a material failing. It's not intuitive to understand how a material fails. So something like LAMPS allows us to study in great detail what those failure mechanisms look like in a real material. The LAMPS open source Molecular Dynamics, or MD, code is experiencing tremendous growth in usage. Researchers around the world are responding to its extensive set of models for simulating different materials, its flexibility for adding new models and new functionality, and most recently, powerful accelerator packages that enable it to run on a wide variety of computing hardware. When you invest effort in learning how to do your science uh, in a particular code, you don't want to be limited to a particular physics model and you don't want to be limited to a particular hardware. And so um, I think that's what draws a lot of people to LAMPS. The people who use it are from a variety of physics, chemistry, engineering backgrounds that just want to model materials in different ways and at different scales as a, as a collection of particles. That's the basic fundamental model within LAMPS. One of the unique capabilities of LAMPS and MD in general is to watch these things happen in real time. So pause time, rewind it, what happened here, what happened there. Uh, and all that is just unique to uh, this simulation capability. The project started small with a team from Sandia National Laboratories and other companies, but began to grow rapidly when the code became open source in the early 2000s. Today, LAMPS runs on platforms from cell phones, to desktop machines to the world's largest parallel supercomputers. And partnerships with Intel Corporation and Temple University are focused on improving the code and accelerating its performance on new Intel processors as well as many other types of hardware. We've created what we call accelerator packages because each of these kinds of hardware can accelerate and speed up the particle simulation that you're running. And so this basically greatly improves the uh, range of compute resources that people have available to them when they're trying to solve their particular science. LAMPS is unique in that it runs well on many different types of hardware and it also supports many different types of models. So models for polymers, models for metals, uh, models for soft matter, and many of these models are included in one or more of these accelerated packages. The impressive variety of researchers using LAMPS has resulted in many prestigious science publications. Starting about five years ago, we were getting more than a thousand citations per year, uh, and that's now more than 2,000 citations per year. So not only is it a large number of citations, but it's actually growing very rapidly. For a billion atom, billion time step calculation, a prominent scientist at Lawrence Livermore National Laboratory writes, our use of LAMPS has led to a recent article published in Nature magazine describing the largest molecular dynamics simulation ever performed, running LAMPS on Livermore's Sequoia supercomputer. For certain types of problems, we really need to push the scale, both in terms of time scales and length scales. And that's where LAMPS really comes into its own. There are very few codes in the world that can work efficiently on those very large scales. It's not just our ideas and our uh, coding that's in the code, it's hundreds of contributors from around the world that have made it into a more powerful package. And so we each get to sort of leverage each other's ideas and uh, capabilities that they've contributed. Excited about the growth and success of LAMPS, the team continues to push forward. We need to optimize it, we need to tune it. Any increase in improvement we can achieve will help us gain insight into the materials and the material science problems that, that we're studying. We think we've established a, a base for this in a way that even as the landscape continues to change, the push to exascale, for example, will mean some additional changes in the kind of supercomputers and hardware that's deployed, that we have a good chance that LAMPS will continue to run well even on those very new large machines. Materials are interesting because they fail, and as scientists we want to understand why they fail. We're working very hard here to improve the approximations that we make inside of MD and specifically LAMPS uh, to make better and better predictions of materials like this one.